Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and today I've got a bit of a wrap up and progress, or rather progress and wrap up video for the Ice Shot Deadeye that uh, we converted from a Raider into a Deadeye for the first time since Deadeye looked really good for bows. And I've got to say, I am very pleased with how Deadeye itself has performed. However, for the absolute end game, these types of characters, I feel a bow character that is, without investing heavy amounts of currency, just do not feel that good for the largest of the large bosses. The mapping was an absolute pleasure and a joy and felt pretty good all around except for probably needing a bit more life for the really high-end maps. So we're talking uh, tier 13 to 15 and 16. If you rolled some pretty nasty map mods on there with damage types, uh, since those do currently uh, do what they're supposed to as opposed to previously, it does get pretty rough and it can get very dangerous with about 5.5k life. Uh, Closer to 6k is what you really should be aiming for, and my choice to go Rat's Nest was fine, but I think when you're really trying to push those endgame maps, if you're going to start doing high red tiers and all of that, then probably a Star Conjure is going to be the way to go, and much closer to 6k life, which should make your living a lot more reliable. There are lots of positive things to say about the bow playstyle right now, especially as a Deadite, and the Chain Ascendancy is one that I started to play around with more instead of uh, the plus arrow or additional Proj, Endless Munitions, and it felt really good. So the damage is pretty damn stupendous in the end with a Chin Soul, and that was a 50% Monster Life Hydra. The problem is you don't really have too much reliable defense uh, being an up-close and personal sort of bow character that has five and a half thousand life, something like that, without instant leech. It does fall just a little bit short unless you completely obliterate everything you attack, which is where much more gear and more damage comes into play. So you either need a lot more damage or a lot more survivability, and either way, the only thing that can fix that is more gear and more currency. So something like the Champion Blade Flurry, however, is so much better for endgame while feeling just a bit worse for mapping. So this one really excels in the lower um, whiter to yellow and even early red tier maps the mapping feels amazing and it's very quick but once you start getting into these end game boss fights without the appropriate level of gear you're going to be dying just a few times every now and again which isn't a huge problem i could still get away with doing a full set of guardians with a few nasty map mods here or there uh, with a couple of deaths as you saw one on minotaur one on phoenix here and I think I died once on Shaper as well. So it's not ideal, but it is still very doable. It is still great damage, and you can still have a very nice softcore playstyle here. This Chimera, for example, had poison damage and monster damage, and holy shit did he hit my poor 5500 life evasion character very, very hard. So it wasn't the easiest kill, and it's not the easiest um, to face some of these guardians with this type of character, but it is still doable and it just means you can't really run some of those nastier map mods. So just a plain white tier 16 for example would be very easy for this type of character but once you start getting a little bit messier it definitely really can be felt uh, throughout the squishiness. And so the end game didn't really feel too good for my liking anyway because I do like to do a lot of these things deathless and feel like I'm progressing but it was still good enough. I'd just much rather play the champion Blade Flurry if I was going to maintain a level of endgame and even try my way into Uber Elder. For something like Uber Elder, I'm just really not sure this character would hold a candle given uh, the current way that I take damage and my life regening abilities. So you can see the end up, uh, the eventual Shaper run is pretty good and damage is great and should be able to do it deathless just about every time. But once you start having to take th uh, take damage from things in plenty of different situations, it's hard to reliably take that damage and recover, especially with the amount of life and all that we have as a bow character. All that aside, I think Deadeye is a great choice for bow characters right now. The Chain Ascendancy is probably the way to go, even though it's a little less on single target. It definitely makes clear feel much, much better. So when I originally said Chain isn't something I thought I needed because clear wasn't an issue. Uh, I kind of have to take that back. I do think the chain ascendancy just makes things a lot smoother because it does increase your clear by something like 50%, I'm going to have to say, and that's just too much to give up. So I do want to go over the character for you guys in case you're uh, building something similar and show you what I've done. So I'm still pretty 
pretty comfortable recommending the character as a uh, strong bow character. It doesn't take too much gear to actually start working. It's just once you start ramping into the end game, it is going to take a bit more gear. On the lower end maps, on the mid tier maps, it's going to feel great. It's going to feel amazing. Uh, ice shots very satisfying, and barrage does do a lot of work, even on a five link, because uh, my current six link isn't super important. I'm just running crit strikes, which isn't a huge extra m amount of output. So it is uh, basically going to be very similar to the Harbinger character that I ran uh, that has a full guide out there already. It was a raider, this time I'm a deadite, still running a Death's Opus, though you can do plenty of different things uh, for bow, it doesn't have to be Death's Opus. And in the end I was running Chinsoul on a weapon swap just for my single target barrage because it's something like 50% more damage up close with barrage uh, just on your up close sort of chin soul action. Uh, so if you just have your barrage set up in your chest, for example, and then have an offhand uh, chin soul with a very similar quiver, these things are pretty damn easy to make, so it's not very hard to have almost the exact same quiver. Quickly weapon swap whenever you want your single target and start barraging. It should be a huge gain in single target. I just don't really like clearing with it because it does feel a bit worse when you get further into the range category. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I'll go over the character for you guys real quick. It is very similar to the previous one, but there are probably a few things I need to mention. So to start with, we're level 90. We did hit about 5,600 life. And like I said, if you don't really care about the 10% uh, movement speed, which I don't think you should at this point, uh, you can hit about 5,900 with a Star Conjure pretty comfortably, and you'll still have good enough damage for most things out there. The chest slot I wasn't really too sold on. I'm not entirely sure if Belly of the Beast is the right move, because uh, if you wear a Star Conjure and then have a more evasion and life defensive sort of chest, you'll still have about the same amount of life as I currently have, but you have a lot more evasion than probably some other nifty defense like... Um, a perfect form, for example, has Arctic Armor as well. Maybe that's the right move, but given I was wearing a rat's nest, I felt I had to do a Belly of the Beast, and I already had the six-linked one anyway. So it is kind of hard to squeeze out all the life you possibly can on a tree like this. Tried to get life just about everywhere I could, and that wasn't too much of a problem, but then getting the resists as well is also fairly tough. And uh, the only other real item I felt was somewhat of a no-brainer is Tomb Fist. Even with the one socket, it's still going to be better than um, most regular gloves because you get 10 attack speed, 5 life, and then just a one socket with um, a murderous eye with bit of life, bit of multi, something like that should end up being uh, much better than a regular pair of gloves since the Intimidate will give you 10% damage too, which is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. So besides um, probably, you know, Tomb Fist and a uh, Death's Opus or a Chin Soul. There's really not much of a gear requirement. It was pretty easy early on, especially if you're only farming, um, you know, low to mid tier maps. It really doesn't matter too much. Uh, a Wise Oak is nice to have just for the uh, extra pen, but by no means necessary. And then your flasks are pretty easy going other than that too. Uh, just a nice pair of boots with lots of movement speed. I bought these when they didn't have a life craft on them for 10c. So if you're looking out for boots without life on them, uh, it should be a lot easier just to craft some on for 60 life and uh, it should be pretty cheap in that case. Just regular belts, get some uh, wed craft on there yourself. A steel ring is the way I went, but I think an opal ring should net you more damage in the end since we scale a lot off of um, just pure cold damage. So we're looking at added cold and um, you can also run ice bite, but at the moment, didn't seem necessary, didn't seem like it was going to be better because I don't have that much scaling from pure Ellie. I'm also using some flat fizz from something like a steel ring. But uh, yeah, the gear is pretty straightforward. And uh, the only other thing I should mention is Mirage Archer support. I did use that in both my setups, both the um, Ice Shot and the Barrage, right from level 4. And it seemed to make sense. Mirage Archer does, I think, help a lot on our clear speed. And also just when you're running around after you shoot once or twice and then you can run around and he's going to do some work when you actually need to dodge things. So Mirage Archer seems like a pretty uh, solid choice in most bow skill setups these days and probably something you're always going to use. Though you can take him out just for more pure tool tip and uh, just a bit more uh, burst damage when you don't have to wait for him to come up and start doing damage as well. And it can be a bit spiky since he doesn't attack super fast with that less modifier. So if you don't have huge amounts of crit, which we don't really, 
then uh, it can be a bit spiky as well instead of just going pure damage in your barrage setup. Overall, the barrage setup for my six link was barrage, mirage arrow, hypothermia, added hold, early damage with attacks, and then ultimately crit strikes. Though you could sub in something like ice bite and then early focus, for example, um, or just ice bite altogether as your last link. It's probably going to be more damage than crit strikes, but uh, I just rolled with these colors and it wasn't much of a problem anyway. And then the Ice Shot setup was Ice Shot, Mirage Archer, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Ellie Damage Attacks, and Added Cold. Now at this point, I did also sub in Chain for a few times and try that out. Because I started to run the Ricochet uh, Chain Ascendancy. And with the four arrows I currently have, I believe, four arrows plus the chain, uh, having three chains like that and doing that much extra damage on the initial hit actually sometimes felt better than GMP. So I encourage you guys to try that out yourselves, but uh, if you don't like the Ricochet Ascendancy at all, then definitely just run Chain in your setup instead of Added Cold, uh, which is how I played up until about level 85. I then went into Ricochet just to try out um, Chain itself, and it does feel really nice, especially for your Barrage when you're single targeting certain monsters. It splits off and does more single target damage to other things around you, giving you a slightly safer buffer for doing your single target damage. Because otherwise, Barrage is very centered and doesn't feel too good at some times. So I did initially grab Endless Munitions, and it is more single target damage, but this is actually still pretty competitive, and I think more of a quality of life for our character. So probably worth using. It is still 10% more damage on the single target, but this one should end up being more like a 15% increase, maybe even 20, if you don't have that many additional projectiles at the time. So there's really not much else to mention. Um, the character has been gone over, I think, in enough detail in previous videos. That should more or less take care of it, uh, as well as my recent choices for certain things. It was fun to play. I definitely do recommend playing a bow character, if not this one, Deadeye Bow Something, uh, in the future, because it is quite satisfying to play Deadeye right now, and bows themselves, I think, are in a very good place. Uh, for now, though, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the wrap-up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope your characters are going just as well, and I'll see you next time.